Hello and uh, welcome back to this part 2 of the introduction. In this part I would like to demonstrate a little about how to navigate uh, the control surface and also the different application that can be found. It's not going to be very detailed. There will be other sessions that will go detailed into each individual item. First of all, it is a touch control surface. That means you have to cooperate with the touch screen. You have a number of commands you have to learn. For instance, you can use two fingers on the screen, which I'm doing. I'm touching the simple part, and you will call up a menu. So two fingers on the screen, that is the same as right-clicking on the mouse. If I do the same thing with the mouse, I call up the same menu. But you can see the scaling, the, the, line, the distance between the lines are different now. So it's adaptive depending on wherever you are controlling it from a mouse or your finger. I close that, call up another menu that is much longer. You can see with a mouse, you can see a lot of items. I can click on the folder and I can unfold. It works pretty much like a phone or a pad. If I do the same with my finger, you can see the distance. Then I can scroll by touching the center. I can move or I have an invisible scroll bar to the right side which also permit me to move uh, the lines up and down. Touching an item will unfold. Okay. The horizontal menu here, you can see a tiny arrow here in the corner. That tiny arrow is indicating that you have more menus sitting to the right. In total you have 24 keys, so if I put my finger on this and I can slide it to the right, and now you can see I can slide it both to the left and to the right. I can do another slide. So I have a different set of keys which I can program to provide me with the function, the function keys I need for that application. On the vertical bar you have exactly the same. I can move it up and down. If I'm using the mouse, I simply use the mouse wheel to click and rotate for the items. You have to be a little curious because you can touch many sections of the screen. For instance, if I want to change the scale, this is not my preference, I simply touch the scale area and I will call up the list of all the possible scales available. And we are supporting all international standard scales plus a number of manufacturer specific scales. We are currently looking at the PQIP scale and that is a DK technology specific scale that's a two-peak scale. This is digital full scale and this is 3 dB above digital zero. Uh, more about that in a special uh, session talk where I'm talking about the two-peak. So you have a number of presets. We have predefined some presets. This is a two-channel preset where I have momentary loudness and short-term loudness. If I don't want to use loudness, I simply click on the bars and select the OFF key and the loudness bars will go away. Similar, I can change the color if I click on the bar. I want this to be yellow. So it's very easy to tailor the layout of the screen. Change the bar width. I want this to be narrow. And you can see now I've changed that to narrow. Change it back to jumbo. So you can build your own comprehensive uh, layout and you can save it under a preset. Once you have the preset defined, 
I right click on this and I can call up an editor and uh, I can backspace the uh, the name and I can type in my own name and save it uh, for that preset. I quit that. Then you can see we have a range of applications. We are currently looking at the Starfish application. We call it Starfish because that's universal. It's also cover where we have the Starfish. I can select the Starfish preset. This is the Starfish and you can see this is a 5 plus 1 layout with the Starfish and time code. Then we have the FFT spectrum analyzer which uh, will work in multiple modes and you can select the channels you want to put a, a frequency analysis on. Uh, I'm currently looking at the left channel. I can switch to the right channel if I want. They are carrying the same uh, signal. And also you have a graphical loudness. I could switch back to the previous preset. Because once that is cleared, you can see this is graph is starting to draw the loudness versus time for you to lock and make an analysis if you're working with loudness. We have another tool available for that application and that is the loudness automation tool. And if I click on that, you can see a graph where you can see a historical view of the loudness. This graph will work both with the safety time code or with the internal timer. So you can uh, work with loudness. There will be a special session uh, where I'm demonstrating the functionality of the loudness automation package. This is the conclusion for uh, part number two. And the next part, I will build a dedicated preset. So follow the next session.